Imagine grappling with what's diagnosed as an incurable illness and being denied access to promising medical advancements that could save your life. Lee Cowan catches up with a couple on a mission, fighting the good fight. The first time we met Brian Wallach, mm -hmm. good job. we feared mm -hmm. it might be our last. Mm -hmm. He was already four years into a diagnosis of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, a rare and incurable disease that on average takes patients in two to five years. But we're pleased to say that this past summer, Brian and his wife, Sandra Abravaya, invited us back to their home outside Chicago. You were like really big on Cool Ranch Doritos for a time. <laughs> With their two daughters, now six and eight, the family just celebrated their sixth Thanksgiving since the diagnosis. Only about 20% of ALS patients ever achieve that kind of longevity. I have been progressing, but the good news is I'm still here. How much has that extra time meant? It's everything. As ALS does, it's been slowly killing off the nerves that move Brian's muscles, including those for speech. So sometimes a smile and a wink will just have to do. <laughs> I'm really good at winking. That's true. But even a soft-spoken Brian is a force to be reckoned with. So when I was a prosecutor... Although he might need round-the-clock care, Brian is still pushing as hard as he ever did, working long days, taking long trips, all to keep his promise to improve the lives of ALS patients everywhere. That work all began back in 2019, when Brian and Sandra launched I Am ALS, a grassroots movement that has given ALS patients a voice in their own care. Let me get everyone on. Thank you. Brian and Sandra had once been staffers in the Obama administration, so they pretty much knew their way around Washington. I'm here to ask you to see us to hear us. And almost right out of the gate, IMALS was instrumental in helping increase federal funding for research by $83 million. And that, is and that helped launch dozens of clinical trials for new ALS therapies. I'm gonna start with the big ones, a few more. But Brian himself didn't qualify for those clinical trials. Doctors thought he wouldn't live long enough anyway to benefit. Basically, they treat you like it's a straight line to palliative care, and they tell you to get your affairs in order and prepare to die. One of the most promising was an experimental therapy called AMX0035. Brian was taking some of the ingredients, but he couldn't get his hands on the drug itself because the FDA hadn't approved it. We are facing a disease that's 100% fatal, and we are willing to take those risks. Just like a political campaign, Brian started firing up supporters for a bill that he later helped write, called Act for ALS. So the thinking behind Act for ALS is, use this funding to pay for this group of patients to get access to the drug before it's officially approved by the FDA. At the time that Brian was- In the summer of 2021, Brian sat next to Sandra in a Capitol Hill hearing room, in tears. This is a closing argument. When you sat down, you really kind of lost it. I was overwhelmed by the sense of responsibility that I felt to other patients. We want to make you have the power to make that possible. It was a long and difficult fight. Giving unapproved therapies to terminally ill patients was an idea fraught with moral pitfalls. And yet... Out. The eyes do have it. The bill's passed. <laughs> this is my fight song. Act for ALS became law, funneling more than $100 million a year for the next five years to various ALS initiatives. <laughs> for once, Brian is speechless. We're sort of in shock. <laughs> if it all sounds like a Hollywood plot point, well, you're not far off. Their friend Chris Burke began working on a documentary he called No Ordinary Campaign. Pop star Rachel Platten was so moved, she let them use her single fight song as the soundtrack. Please, 
Ryan Wallach and his wife, Sondra. I say hi to you both. They turned their pain into purpose. But the change Brian and Sandra are affecting didn't end where the documentary does. We're going to make real progress. Again, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. Thank you Mr. President. No, I've still got a lot of value left in me. In fact, their newest fight is helping ALS patients get better access to specialists. We tried to change the way that doctors were practicing medicine in neurodegenerative diseases, and we hit a wall, and so we started our own medical practice. It's called Synapticure, a for-profit telemedicine practice that gets people with a host of neurological diseases, including ALS, the care they need faster. The Food and Drug Administration approved a new therapy for ALS. Those treating ALS now have more options than they've had in decades. The FDA has approved two more therapies for ALS, including that one that Brian had been denied when we first met him. This is the drug that we were fighting for FDA to approve. Yeah. And it's here. AMX0035, now called Relivrio, tastes pretty awful, he says, but he thinks it's made a huge difference. We credit Brian being as healthy as he is, relatively speaking, to the fact that we were one of the first people who found a way to at least take a portion of this drug for years. The other newly approved therapy is Tofersen, now under the brand name Calcity. In 2019, Chris Snow got access to it as part of a clinical trial for his rare inherited form of ALS. I don't necessarily feel like myself or look like myself when I act like myself. Chris was given just six months to a year to live, but he was still going strong more than four years later. Yeah! And his wife, Kelsey, had no doubt it was because of the drug. The quality of life that this has given us is really a miracle. They shouted to the rafters how active Chris had remained. <laughs> as recently as last summer, they were posting pictures of him mowing the lawn out on a boat. If you can see and care about my family and that makes you care about this cause, that's what I'm going for. They were as optimistic as they come until Chris went into cardiac arrest two months ago and never recovered. A loss that hit Brian and Sandra hard. But it's also emboldened them to fight even harder. Brian is so defiant that even though his legs are uncooperative, he still pushes himself to walk. And every day he gets to try, he says, give science another day to take its steps forward to find a lasting remedy. And Brian says he's bound and determined to be here when that happens. How do you stay so positive knowing that there is no cure and you just keep pushing forward? I have hope that I can be a part of the first generation to actually survive ALS. We all hope he's right.